Yeah, tell Mac and Pacquiao come back over here. He been here before, he didn't broke records here before, he's a legend of the sport, and it'd be my honor to fight him next. Often in boxing, you hear of fighters defying the odds. But for two generational talents in the welterweight division, you have seen it, you have lived it, and you have felt it. Manny Pacquiao is the only eight division champion in the timeline that is boxing's history. Pacquiao has defied the odds, both with his superlative talent and his ability to defeat Father Time. I can't believe he's 40 years old. It's still fighting like this. At 42 years old, this may be the last time we see one of the greatest fighters of all time in the ring. Pacquiao, a sitting senator of the Philippines, is rumored in 2022 to be a candidate for president of his home country. October 10th, 2019. A one-car accident. Errol Spence was thrown from his vehicle, walked away with just bruises. It could have been much, much worse. So Errol Spence Jr. has also defied the odds. In this case, the odds of fate. 11 years younger than Pacquiao, Errol Spence is in the prime of his career. His reign as welterweight world champion has lasted over four years. Now, Spence has the biggest opportunity of his career, for if he defeats the legend Manny Pacquiao, it will check the box on his resume, taking him to the level of transcendent superstar. On August 21st, at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, two fighters, one already an all-time great, the other well on his way, will face off generation versus generation in one of the great welterweight world championship fights of the last decade. On that night, we will see if Manny Pacquiao or Errol Spence Jr. can defy the odds one more time. Welcome to PBC Fight Camp. Manny Pacquiao versus Errol Spence Jr. Los Angeles, California. It's Monday morning, just before 7 a.m. And when Manny Pacquiao is in town, you can set your clock to the fact that the only eight division champion in the history of boxing will be on his morning run. Like everything else in Hollywood, this is big. And every day, every run, this throng is in attendance. Very apropos for the location, and it most certainly fits the part for Manny Pacquiao. He's more popular in Los Angeles than LeBron James. That's what Valet came out to him. If LeBron was here, they wouldn't come out like this. But man, he's just different. If you could watch Muhammad Ali fight one more time, you'd be here. Manny is the Muhammad Ali of this era. He's an icon. He's much bigger than boxing. He's a crossover star. He's an inspiration to everybody here. You guys want anything signed? Next item, please. a lot to the fans. I mean, it's a responsibility. If you want to be a people's champ, you have to fulfill your responsibility. I'm here because of them. The afternoon for Pacquiao includes even more familiarity. It's been two years since he last fought. But back in the wild card, being trained by the legendary Freddie Roach, it's as if he never left. This place has been his home for 20 years. And in that time, his signature Manny Pacquiao work ethic has never wavered.
I love the way I punish myself in training. Boxing is about hard work. I like working hard. That's how you become a champion. When the time comes that you become lazy, then forget about boxing. I remember telling Manny one time, I said, Manny, when you start slowing down and your work ethic isn't that great, that's when I'm going to tell you to retire. And the other day he asked me, he said, Freddie, am I over the hill? I said, no, Manny, you're not over the hill yet. It seems like a simple formula, hard work and passion for preparation. But even at 42 years old, as he gets ready for his mega battle with Errol Spence Jr., Pacquiao continues to push his limits to legendary heights. He's gonna go down as one of the greatest fighters of all time, regardless if he wins or loses. But I just think Manny's a better fighter than he is, and I think Manny can beat him. Summer in Dallas has temperatures averaging over 95 degrees. In the world-class boxing gym, it is at least 10 to 15 degrees hotter. With Errol Spence Jr. in the midst of his 28th professional fight camp, it's just another infamous sparring session day. Two different sparring partners, 14 rounds, 42 minutes. Don't raise up on there. Light up, light up, there we go. You go feet, you go feet. Steady moving through the fires and flames. This ain't the wire, but it's all in the game. You know I always keep that royal flood, royal, royal, royal flood. Hey yo, I got that royal flood, royal, royal, royal flood. Come to the outside, come to the other side. See what I'm saying? Listen, short chopping steps. Derek James has been Spence's trainer for his near decade career. On that stick, the right up. I see his focus. I see that he doesn't have any limit on what he'll do to get better. I think that's the key element is that I know him as a guy who's going to push himself to be great every time. That's why you know, I like him as an individual, not only as a fighter, because he's not only a hard worker, but he wants to be perfect. Pushes himself to be great. It's all about the angle, because if you if you step an angle, he can't, you're not in front of him to shoot, for him to shoot the shot. You know what I'm saying? You still got a ways to go. Boxing is like life. Just, you never stop learning, you always learn something new. I mean, I'm striving to be perfect. I know that, you know, I'll probably never reach that perfect level, but I'm always going to strive to try to be, you know, my perfect self each and every day. Where to push yourself, where to push yourself. After the car accident in October of 2019, the two worked together to rebuild Spence, both mentally and physically, as he defended his titles against former world champion Danny Garcia. Vitally important to see the effects of that car crash on Errol Spence. Oh, there's a hard left hand by Errol Spence who drives Garcia back. Danny Garcia's eye is getting marked up, not closed just yet, but that jab has found a home right on the eye, left eye of Danny Garcia. And it looks like Spence is winning round after round. And Errol Spence Jr. looks like his old self. No ill effects from the car accident. His hands are fluid. It's effortless. He's looked terrific here tonight. This has just been an outstanding look to the welterweight champion of the world. And still, the undefeated, unified, welterweight champion of the world, the truth, Errol Spence Jr. Dip, dip on the outside. You out there. 
After a dominant comeback performance, Spence is now focused on Manny Pacquiao. So taking daughters Ivy and Violet to work is extra motivation for the unified welterweight champion. And the effort he is putting in today is with the intention of making this clash of champions the final fight for Manny Pacquiao. I mean, I think he'll retire to this fight. I mean, he has a lot of obligations in the Philippines. You know, um, knowing what I can do and knowing that what I want to do, I don't see I don't see him coming back coming back anytime soon or ever. Outside the ring is nothing but respect. I respect his legacy. I respect him as a person. I respect his humility and things like that. But once that bell rings, once you get in the ring, all the respect goes out the window. And, you know, it's basically it's a young line on the old line, and I'm going to take his kingdom. A long, hard day of training at the gym doesn't only exhaust Spence, but his four-year-old daughter, Violet, as well. So when it's time to go, Proud Papa Errol Spence Jr. needs to put in a little extra work. Athletes have political aspirations that come to fruition after their careers have ended. But most things Manny Pacquiao does defy the odds. In 2010, Pacquiao, in the prime of his boxing career, was elected to the Philippines House of Representatives. Six years later, he became a senator. Now at 42 years old, Senator Pacquiao of the Philippines is training for an opportunity to become the unified welterweight champion of the world. Albeit, balancing both occupations isn't always easy. Being a leader has a discipline in time management, everything you can manage in that. And still with me, but in my heart, I will serve honestly to the people, and I'm still a champion. I know he's a senator right now, and I said, man, I said, you can't get, get this time off. We're, we're in the middle of training camp. I mean, so this is this training camp is very important. And he's ready. I promise you, I, I'll be there. I'll be there. I want to help people. I want to do the right things in, in, in politics, to be a role model and inspiration in the next generation. This weekend, Pacquiao's political staff arrived. The Philippine Senate is about to begin their sessions. Manny will not break his training. He will be a part of these meetings via Zoom from his Los Angeles residence, some 7,300 miles from home. As we start the third regular session of the Alien Congress in the service of our continent. Being a politician, my intention is not for myself, or for my family, but for the Filipino people. That's my commitment to the Filipino people to serve honestly and to fight for them, especially the, those people who are left behind and uh, who are nothing. Mr. President, we received a message from the House of Representatives. We ask the Secretary to read the message for the record. My biggest fear to the Philippines is to increase the unemployment rate, and that's my biggest fear in, in the country and also more people don't have shelter in the Philippines. Any objection? Hearing none, the motion is of Senate concurrent resolution number 15. I feel what they're feeling right now. I feel what, uh, what the feelings of being nothing, hunger, um, without uh, shelter, sleeping in the street. I, 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 I feel that, I experience that. So uh, this is the right time that I, you know, I have to fight for them. As long as I live, I'm excited to go back to the Philippines to do my job. But I have to finish this job first, August 21. Hello. 
as the star that is Errol Spence has risen, it has become an important tenant for the world champion to contribute to the community from where he came. I really didn't realize how impactful, how big I was, like, especially like to other like kids and amateur kids, and especially in my city. And it really didn't register to me because, you know, when I was growing up, I didn't have anybody to look up to or anybody that I idolized for my city. So, you know, for me, it's just, you know, I just reached down and just show love to, you know, different amateur boxers and just, you know, give them a little bit of encouragement. So today, Spence is surprising a group of young Dallas boxers with that love and encouragement by visiting a local rec center. Hey, what's up, little man? Arranged by his longtime friend, Adrian Clark, Spence will donate $15,000 worth of boxing equipment to the center, a gift that will pay long-term dividends for these kids. I told them back in 2012, the city's literally on your back. So it was meaningful for us to give back to the city of Dallas, but also give back to the kids. So we wouldn't be able to do this without Arrow. So this is a really big deal to have him here and to get this dedication done for the kids. What up, what up? What, what's that? Let me see. OK. Good job, man. How many times you won? Your first fight. Your first fight? OK, good job. You got to be a student of the game. You gotta be willing to want to learn. Yeah, you don't know everything. Like, yeah. even me, like, I don't know everything. Yeah, I'm still learning. My coach still always in my ear. He always in my ear telling me stuff, and, you know what I'm saying? So you can always learn, you always get better. It's the reason why, you know, Floyd had a coach, you know. In fact, yeah, I still got a coach, you know. Hey, oh, let me see. This one heavy. Better than BD. And how many fights you had? Just two. Just two? OK. And you want both these? Yes, sir. Oh, good job. Good job. Keep going. How old are you? Two. I got a son in nine months. He coming for you. Tell him we ready. Yeah, you ready. Come <laughs> on. All right, man. Hey, how are you? Sound good. Appreciate you. Appreciate that. Who'd you look up to? <laughs> oh, it was. Like a lot, when I first started, I looked up to Roy Jones. Because Roy Jones was like Superman. Just moving up and down weight classes, just slipping and doing crazy stuff. So it was Roy Jones, and then I started learning about like Terry Norris, and then it was like Sugar Ray Leonard, and Marvin Hagler, you know, Roberto Duran, you know, Tommy Hearns, all those old school guys, Gerald McCullen. Like when you watch a boxing, don't just watch the top half of them throwing punches, watch their feet. Watch they, how they react when they get hit. Watch how they react, you know what I'm saying, when somebody throw a punch, where they slip, or how they block the punch, or, you know, when somebody coming in them, how they step back. And oh, just, touch. Yeah, just the details on everything. It is a lifestyle, boxing lifestyle, man. It's something you don't play. You play football, basketball, soccer, all that. You, yeah, you can't play boxing. You got to take care of your temple. Yeah. You got to take care of your temple. Now, I know this was amazing for the kids. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was looking at it himself when he was younger, whether it was a Floyd Mayweather or another big name fighter that came to a gym to speak. For the kids to look up to him the same way, uh, I know it means a lot to these kids, and they'll, they'll never forget this. For two fighters who have transcended their generations, defying the odds is just what they do and who they are. Whether it's current political obligations for the senator from the Philippines, while simultaneously training to regain the welterweight championship of the world so he can add to an already epic legacy, or impacting young children with a speech, a smile, and a selfie, the unified welterweight champion of the world is hungry, focused, and understands what this fight means to his legacy. On August 21st, the 42-year-old transcendent boxing legend will take on the 31-year-old legend in the making at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas with the unified welterweight world championship on the line. 
two great champions who have taught us all that defying the odds can be the mark you leave. Defying the odds can become part of your narrative. And defying the odds can one day become your norm. Vince Jr., August 21st, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. Thank you for watching. Well, if you enjoyed that clip, make sure you click uh, somewhere around here and subscribe from Fight Highlights to exclusive interviews. We have got everything you need as a boxing fan right here on PBC on Fox.